Well, ephedrine is a sort of beta agonist. It'll increase the heart rate, indirectly increasing cardiac output. Phenylephrine is more of a pure vasoconstrictor. And uh, phenylephrine should logically be used to treat a vasodilation which is induced by spinal, spinal anesthesia. The reason why phenylephrine hasn't been used over many years is because of some of the earlier work which was done in sheep. So over many, many years, ephedrine has been the sort of the mainstay of treating spinal hypertension, given usually as bolus, some rarely as infusions. And then a few years ago, uh, researchers such as Warwick Nanke from Hong Kong started looking at alpha agonists again and, and found out actually there wasn't much of a problem using them. And in fact, ephedrine causes, caused a lot more fetal acidosis than, uh, than phenylephrine, which is an alpha agonist. So now, uh, people who use uh, phenylephrine, mainly because of the acidosis, but actually also because it provides much better stability cardiovascularly. The mothers um, are the mothers aren't as nauseous; um, they don't vomit as much as well. So purely from that point of view, it's it's a pretty good technique. Thank you. Over the last few years. Um, Phenylephrine infusions have sort of taken over from the use of ephedrine and it's routinely used in most major obstetric anaesthesia units uh, as an infusion to prevent spinal hypertension. So most people are using it usually in a dose of 100 mics uh, per minute uh, given as an infusion from when the spinal goes in. Some of the research we've been doing uh, has been using the suprasternal Doppler machine to measure cardiac output. And one of the more recent studies we've been using is to look at uh, different doses of phenylephrine um, infusions to reduce spinal hypertension. Certainly what we did uh, fairly recently was to look at different concentrations of phenylephrine. The, the criticism from some of the previous studies was that 100 mics per minute is too high a dose to use. So we've looked at 25 micrograms versus 50 micrograms versus 100 micrograms to see which was better in terms of cardiovascular stability and to improve the amount of information we were getting we were using the suprasternal Doppler machine to measure cardiac output and in fact what we found was that um, the 100 mics per minute group had a 20% reduction in cardiac output compared to the 25 microgram group which was a much lower uh, under 10% or something like that. Obviously this probably doesn't matter for fit healthy pregnant mothers having a cesarean section but reducing the cardiac output and, and presumably your flow to the uterus as well in a compromised fetus, that may have significant implications. So that's something that we've done recently. We use 50 micrograms per minute infusion. Practically what we do, we take an ampule of phenylephrine, 10 milligrams, we put it into a bag of saline, 100 mils, so the concentration is 100 mics per mil in, within the bag, within the, uh, within the bag of saline. And we take 50, 30 mils of that and dilute it with 30 mils of saline in a 50 mil syringe, a 60 mil syringe. So our final concentration in that syringe is 50 micrograms per mil. Now that is run at 60 mils an hour, which gives you approximately 50 mic you're giving about 50 mics per minute and what we do is we run it as soon as the spinal starts and then um, we increase or decrease it depending on the systolic blood pressure so if the systolic blood pressure goes above baseline we reduce above baseline then we reduce it a bit if it goes below baseline we increase it a bit and on the whole we rarely need to change the rate of infusion as as long as you start it right at the beginning of the spinal. That's what we use. Now um, we are starting, um, certainly from some of the research as I've already alluded to, we, we started reducing the doses and I think probably something around 20 to 25 micrograms and other, other people have shown that fairly recently may be a better, better combination to use. The, the biggest questions now are um, 
what, which drug should we use to treat hypertension uh, with preeclampsia. And um, certainly uh, Dyer's work, Rob Dyer's work from Cape Town, South Africa, uh, this paper which I mentioned in my talk, um, paper he published in Anesthesiology last year, looking at severe preeclamptics and uh, using, uh, looking at cardiac output with Lidco has sort of shown what sort of changes are going on and I think some of the work which will be coming out in the next few years will be looking at the effects of ephedrine and phenylephrine in preeclampsia. In theory, uh, phenylephrine probably shouldn't be used in preeclampsia because it causes more vasoconstriction. Uh, physiologically, preeclamptics uh, on the whole, that they have a, a greater degree of, uh, they're, they're, they're more vasoconstricted. So you probably shouldn't do that. But we don't have enough data at the moment, and one of the studies we're trying to set up is to look at that in preeclampsia as well, a multi center study. I think the other, the other problem with um, ephedrine is this question whether it, um, it does affect heart rate, it, it does affect myocardial oxygen consumption and uh, there are papers stemming from about 10 years ago which show, which show um, ECG changes, cardiovascular changes with ephedrine, especially used as an infusion. And I, I think another interesting thing to study would be to look at uh, ECG stroke myocardial changes with ephedrine compared to phenylephrine and uh, using halter monitoring, measuring tro troponin levels and things like that. I think Syntosian on itself is a drug which should be treated very cautiously. In the past, we used to give 10 units at delivery. That was standard. Until a case, uh, there was a case in the, uh, the triennial report a few years ago um, in which a patient uh, died after the, the, the case was quite complicated. But uh, Syntosian on contributed to that. And after that report, um, most, un most uh, obstetric anaesthetists now are using five units of Syntosin on that delivery. Even five units of Syntosin at delivery can have profound cardiovascular effects, uh, uh, dramatic drop in systemic vascular resistance and, you know, and other effects as well. So in healthy patients, giving five units now, we tend to do it slowly, over a few minutes or so. We probably dilute it in five, five mils of saline and give it very slowly. Even that in patients who are already cardiovascularly compromised can make a difference. And there are uh, units who, which, uh, who wouldn't use Syntosin at all, unless it can be helped, in patients with significant cardiovascular disease because of its profound effect on, on systemic vascular resistance.